Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the RCI Community Funds LinkedIn Live. My name is Bill Houston, and I am here with Russell Fugit. And um, I just want to introduce myself. I am one of the uh, the, the five partners at the uh, RCI um, <laughs> RCI Community Investment Funds, um, and we do a weekly LinkedIn Live. And this morning we have uh, Russell Fugit on. I'll have Russell introduce himself. And then we'll get right into the interview. Well, Bill, thanks so much for having thanks me today. So for having uh, me. Uh, to be here today, uh, to be excited, here today. To excited to have this conversation. Conversation. Uh, my name is Russell Fugit. Uh, Russell Fugit. Uh, based uh, here near Annapolis, uh, Maryland. Here in Annapolis, Maryland. Uh, I have deep roots in the Greater Baltimore area. Was an actual area was an actual um, and uh, uh, currently, uh, 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 the one that's perhaps most relevant for us today is my role as founder, is my role as founder of, uh, equity endowment. Equity endowment. Creating an endowment fund. Creating wealth gap. Investing in minority fund manager. Working diversified financial portfolio. Back. Uh, to uh, uh, other nonprofit uh, organizations, non organizations for entrepreneurial, for entrepreneurial and black and brown community. Black and brown community. Uh, more recently, we've kind uh, of pivoted with a very, uh, very big vision. We focus on workforce focus development. On workforce development. We decided to partner with our wife, who is a career in industry, industry developed uh, healthcare administration, uh, healthcare administration, administration curriculum. We're in the process of working process with, with in town through our partner, town, through our partner, Academy, Academy, meeting, uh, online, uh, online, online, uh, credit accredited, uh, accredited for uh, um, boards, uh, auto detailing, uh, auto detailing, uh, other, uh, other, uh, other uh, uh, curriculum that they offer. They offer uh, also uh, uh, in so communication and looking at similar work in Baltimore. So, so I'm very excited about this. Very excited about this. And there's just so much happening, so much uh, happening here uh, in here Maryland. In Maryland, exciting time here in the time state. Here in the state. And, uh, as a fifth generation fifth entrepreneur, generation entrepreneur, we're we're a lot of businesses, a lot of businesses, a lot of things from online, digital, digital advertising, digital to, advertising to, software, to software, software, software development, software, software stuff, software stuff. Really been a unique opportunity. Really been a unique opportunity. Really kind of pivot in my background in business, philanthropy, and look at how we can revitalize our community, get into the middle of the community. Uh, the, the second uh, decade, the second, second decade, decade, the third decade, decade, rather, the 20s, decade, rather, the 20s, rather, 20s, if you will, you will. Uh, and really, um, you know, really past COVID and look at how we look at how opportunities, opportunities for all of them. Thank you very much, Russell, for that introduction. You've worn many hats in your career, from founding companies to leading DEI initiatives. What drives your commitment to building inclusive communities and supporting diverse entrepreneurs? Well, I really I think I have to go really, back to my family, uh, family, uh, back uh, my family, back story. My family uh, yes, I mentioned I'm a fifth generation, I'm a fifth generation entrepreneur. Um, I'm blessed um, to know that my great great grandfather uh, escaped, escaped slavery uh, during the Civil War, the war the the Union the train, train heading up train, north, heading up north to New York, York, where he was adopted by a retired. I uh, introduced him to uh, a man named Russell. A man named Russell. We taught him to trade a blacksmith. Taught him to trade a blacksmith. I was able to have his own blacksmith. Able to have his own blacksmith in in uh, yeah. Baldwinsville, New York. Baldwinsville, New, New York. And I have a patent on my wall here in my home that he uh, filed in 1888 for improvements to the road park, like a horse and a buggy. So he did improvements to the suspension system of the buggy. In 1888, emancipated, self-emancipated, formerly enslaved. Formerly enslaved. Eric. Married, had married, had in Baldwinsville, New York. We have a picture of it. We have a picture of it. My father's house. Father's house. You get black kids. You get black kids. Black kids. He sent all five. He sent all five. The youngest of which was my great grandfather. My great grandfather. He was an amazing educator. Amazing educator. Cornell was one of the first. Cornell was one of the first. Fraternity Incorporated. Fraternity Incorporated. Ended up in Westchester. Westchester. Speedy. Working with Booker T. Washington. With Booker T. Washington. Uh, there, uh, there, uh, Westchester, okay. Pennsylvania. Westchester, Pennsylvania. Get middle school, you get middle school, school exists and has been named after him. Named after the 13th is Joseph R. Fugate, Joseph R. Fugate, 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 Fugate in the West, Pennsylvania. So, to come from a family of a family of community activists, perhaps the most noteworthy story is that my late uncle, my late uncle, did almost a billion dollars. In 1987, 1987 back, uh, by Michael Milken, 
He passed away in 1993. He's African American. And so, my philanthropic bent on the awareness that they were generated in my family and the other family and foundation, which my cousins, my aunts, lead so well. and and all that part of some of the initiatives that we've done kind of there and be able to experience financial impact. And so um, in this season, I've been able to draw from all of those experiences and all that understanding of America, for the center from a free African that fought America in every other town in this country. So just have all the immense history and, and just a wealth of perspective on the perspective of it. Kind of figure out how to package that and direct that. Direct that. So, um, really um, really thinking about what it looks like to build a truly inclusive America. And I'm so blessed that I have ancestors that have been on their own path and were able to uh, be included in this uh, amazing American story that can be going and this uh, project and democracy. Uh, um, but as we all know, it's a, project, all know, it's a, work, and it's a group project, and it's still a lot of work for us to do. So I'm just trying to play my part. I'm trying to play my part to be a part of my family and have wonderful access and networks access and, networks and, 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 and a wealth of understanding and understanding and between my family background and family background and in Christ is also a great job. I really lead uh, with the listen, uh, the first uh, seeking understanding, and looking to see what gifts and, and experiences I can bring to the table to help improve people's lives and create a more inclusive world. And so, currently, getting very focused here locally in Maryland, but hope it has. Hope that as facilities permit and uh, platform uh, fail, that we can do more uh, things locally, uh, certainly, locally, certainly, certainly, nationally, certainly, nationally, even more things internationally. I've been blessed to travel, I've been blessed to travel, to travel activity, I've done some work there, I've done work there, I've done the U.S. Embassy, the U.S. Embassy from pre COVID, and so we can get back to the international. international. Um, again, just have a lot to pull from a lot, I can elaborate a lot more, elaborate a lot more about my ancestors and my ancestors, but again, really having this awareness of my story and having deep roots in my faith and understanding um, that the best of us leaders are called to really seek, that's really what really really drives me towards this work and thinking about how we can truly mobilize our communities uh, in America. Wow, thank you. That's a that's a really unique perspective. That's a really unique history, um, and 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 I I have to say now that uh, <clears throat> that that your uncle was um, a a really great inspiration for me. Uh, you know, I, I was a big fan. Um, so you're known for your talent in building consensus and fostering inclusive collaborations. What advice would you give for leaders looking to build diverse, high impact teams? Um, it takes um, courage. Right. right. Um, it's very um, easy for us as human beings because of our bias and bias. Our bias, and bias, and bias and that's a hard of human thing. Brain science and brain science and humanity. So really being able to have the courage to have find people who do not share your background, do not share your interests or your area of expertise, and figuring out how to engage those individuals. And like I said earlier, leading with the lesson, seeking to understand first, and then an invitation to invite folks in, or seeking invitations to yourself to be invited into their world and understand. And then that way, getting a different that perspective, way, getting a different perspective. And figuring out how you can incorporate you can someone else's gifts, talents, 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 experiences into, into, uh, into your project, or you perhaps you're being focused on your project, or perhaps you're not seeking to find common ground and common, and common goals goal that you want to accomplish. And so, so um, it takes patience. Perhaps it takes a uh, little bit of heart uh, of love, dare I say, love, dare I uh, say. to be able to have that willingness to that um, willing not always center yourself. Always center yourself. Really take at least some time to center someone else to, 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 to listen, to truly listen intently to understand. I think uh, we need more of that certainly in our country, in our world, world. world. level of patience, that level of willingness, that level of willingness. If we don't agree, we can certainly all be in Perhaps understood to some extent, and then find what we share. In what we share in That's really um, the um, posture I encourage people to have. It takes work, it takes intentionality. It takes a little bit, so a little bit of selflessness, selflessness um, to be able to be that kind of leader, that kind of leader, that can be a bridge builder. And I like to say that if you're a bridge builder, you have to prepare to walk on by both sides. You really have to prepare to have a little bit of attention um, in doing some, some of this work. So it really takes that intentionality. It takes a couple of uh, um, consistency, uh, it takes a level of perseverance and persistence. Um, but it's certainly uh, 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 fruit 
uh, in due time. And I believe when I've been in similar situations where I believe when I have to see things shift, I was only just slightly, but shift nonetheless in the direction. So um, that's how I would encourage, how I would encourage people who are thinking about doing this work uh, to really you know, begin with how they want to position themselves um, and how they're going to show up and the way that they have it and how they show up and how they show up. go about seeking new relationships so that they can raise themselves, improve their awareness, their net strength in the world, and virtually diversify uh, their, uh, their backgrounds, experiences, and talents they have access to. So you never know. You may find yourself in you know, a project or in a, a, a group that something you never thought about or dreamed about even you were talking about um, before you know it. And so um, we just encourage people to have, to have some faith, have courage, be bold, and uh, don't be afraid to take that first step and, and really lead with a listen and seek to understand. You know, you've mentioned listen a couple times. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that I would like to ask you here is how does leading with a listening first approach benefit projects, especially those focused on community capital and equity mm -hmm. and closing that uh, racial wealth gap. You know, we're being here in, in you know, greater Baltimore and you know, family, both side, my parents both have been multi-generational roots in Baltimore. Um, and I think back to 2015 and Freddie Gray. And, you know, people were calling me who had visited Baltimore, people who were you know, working with me doing this at the time, or is everything okay? Are you okay? And I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I'm, yeah, I'm fine. I think there was a disconnect for some folks who didn't understand why this was happening. Why this was happening. And, um, you know, what I had to explain is that you know, we see riots or protests that people have not seen even heard. And people have not, uh, people have not uh, any of these people of power, people who do have access to capital, have not taken the time to listen. And so, unfortunately, when that well, happens, unfortunately, when that happens well, um, people are, are going to demand it. And there's all often a, a, all often a, a moment, moment when, uh, when uh, those demands are going to come uh, forth. Come forth. Freddie, Gray. Freddie Gray. Well, for Freddie Gray, oh, certainly. certainly. Perhaps I hope, still, fortunately, even for almost 10 years removed from this, for Baltimore and for Maryland, for moments that. People had to hear and people had to look here and people had to look to be George Floyd was a more national reckoning. National reckoning back to it. So we really had to think about what are we doing in society. And we certainly know that coming out of that's what we animated. A lot of the work that's being done, think about inclusion. Um, and so for me, I, I go back to uh, 1999, sophomore at Trinity College, and Jesse Jackson, who was a family friend, happened to come speak at my campus. And he said the biggest fight in the 20th, uh, 21st century will be the fight for access to capital. And how in America will we multicultural tent where everyone can truly participate? And one of the reasons we're going to need to be able to do that in America, capitalist society, is where everyone has equal access to capital. So for me, I see that as a reaction in the civil rights movement and the work that my uncle has done, the work that my great grandfather, my name, create the first public housing in the Philadelphia area. Westchester, Westchester. We think about access, so to access, access. but access to capital course creates uh, 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 housing health care. So we're really thinking about so this as the civil rights movement, so to speak, of our time, of our time, the how uh, this how, world, uh, this is not, world, and not just for Black and Brown Americans, but for actually all Americans are all truly included and have opportunities, have access to capital, have access to businesses. Right, most jobs are created. America uh, government uh, able to as small businesses. We small need more small businesses. We need more small people business. to the capital that can hire, that can scale, and that can that can more time. And uh, many of us often know us often know who are closest to the solution, closest to the problem, also are closest to the solution because they understand the problem. They understand the problem. Those individuals we don't empower them with the resources and the agency and the space they need to create the solution. Um, we're going to become more fragmented in society and see the wealth gap. Um, so I think there's a really not unique opportunity in this time to really address it and to do this work. And certainly with uh, equity endowment, we've looked at all the philanthropic capital, over $230 billion of philanthropic capital that's kind of on the sidelines looking for investment, right? Whether the investment can create returns, both social returns and financial returns. And so our model, and there's a few others out there that are looking at this similarly, how do we get this how do we the capital off the sideline and really get it injected into the right 
communities right. into the right people's hands with some support around it that can create opportunity and begin to create uh, more access to capital, more opportunity in communities that for too long, similar to what happened with Freddie Gray uh, with some years ago here in Baltimore, too many communities left behind for generations. Generations. That's what animates me, and I really think that's the goal uh, for this time as we, as we look forward to 2025. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'd like to introduce my partner here, Stephen Schaff. And, uh, you know, Steve, thank give you. you the next question. Introduce yourself and give us the next question. Uh, I'm having all sorts of uh, technical problems here. Can you hear me? Technical problems here. Can you hear yes. Me? Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Russell, um, it's uh, good seeing you again. Well, Russell, and, uh, uh, thank you for your, your and, overview. Uh, one of the common things I think between the three of us, and probably a number of people in our audience, is we work in a lot of different um, a lot of things so to speak so we're not just uh, you know working in one area and have that extra area and have that uh, we, we really cross a lot of lines really lot of that earlier this year and had some several conversations, conversations which we knew that one way or another we were way or another we were interested in, in, in some sort of collaboration collaboration all the things that you're doing now and you explained now, in the introduction what is your priority? Where are you priority, at the moment? You at? Uh, what kind of things uh, do you hope to do with, with uh, the initiatives that you've been working on in the last year or so? Last year or so. Well, it's been a very well, interesting season. Very interesting I've been season. wearing a number of hats, a number of hats. Uh, you know, quite functionally. Quite for functionally. Myself, you know, um, it's been a very interesting uh, time for my family. Uh, like, uh, like, a little bit. Um, uh, you know, my mother-in-law passed away in January. January. And, January, and, January, and, January, and my, uh, my wife has been through the country. came back. Uh, to, uh, to her uh, company, to her which was company, uh, which initially backed by Google Ventures, at Google Ventures. Uh, had a private equity transition uh, earlier, uh, earlier about uh, last year. Last year, um, year. Um, she was uh, as an executive of this company was being let go. Being let go. So it was a real big pivot oh, for, uh, for, uh, for my family, but we also but kind of reanimated her and we're working on some of the things being had to around. Well, uh, the pivot uh, equity endowment was the starting point. And we really began to look more closely at it, seeing that there's a, a health care particularly in the, the area of dentistry. There's a lack of talent, lack of talent of running dental practices. Running dental practices in a huge industry. A lot of people don't realize how Google is. And a lot of people don't also realize how much dental health is important to your overall health. They say you can tell your health. Your health, the health, health of your mouth and the health your of your mouth and health of your mouth. So when you think about dentistry, being dentistry. So that we have access, we have access is that there's enough dentists in the professional dentists. communities. But then also looking at career opportunities. In Maryland, we have the blue Maryland, we have the blue Maryland, where uh, or, uh, or, 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 or Maryland uh, is required uh, education. Uh, education. I think by 10th grade, by the end of the decade, every student either has uh, on the path to college, path to college or have or in the, in the process of being a dental. That allow them to end the work for them in the work for high school. And so it's a real unique opportunity right now. So my wife got to work. My wife got to work. Uh, robust curriculum. Before it can be done in 10 weeks, we've got 10 weeks before it can be done some apprenticeship in office time. In office time. And a health care and a health care development program. So we've been having wonderful conversations. We've been doing a lot of more time practice in the office here and on the front end. We're located. Express a high level of interest in the front end of um, we've, uh, we just this week, um, we partnered with Walt Academy and Walt Management, and the mayor of Hagerstown signed a loan. They're looking at acquiring a, a property in Hagerstown, uh, $2.8 million project, we're the workforce development, a healthcare administration project, we'll do as well as the esports um, and other programs, um, other programs, other programs I mentioned, programs I mentioned. Interview. And so really excited for excited. how do we create impact and then how can we, once we get um, all the programs accredited, all the programs are accredited, once we get all the accreditations, all the accreditations how, can how can we duplicate this from Washington County, Washington County, to the Baltimore, Prince George, Prince George states. Uh, with Ball Academy has just run into the Bermuda, Fulton County, Georgia, which is a land border, which is a land and also in the process also of going out in Samoa, uh, Samoa, uh, Samoa as well, as well. in the wow. territory. So, um, so we're really uh, having a really platform and amazing partnerships. We're also in a conversation with CIA, CIA 
about 50 year old, uh, year old uh, organization here in Baltimore as well. And so we're really excited for next year and really looking at how do we get capital, the opportunity, how do we get capital in the right places to really right places look at how do we scale young people, how do we also scale businesses, how do we create a third place, how do we create a third place, a third place um, creating a hub for entrepreneurs, a, hub for entrepreneurs. a little bit of activity in Hagerstown. We also know there's opportunity in Maryland and elsewhere as well. And elsewhere as well. You know, really been excited to like been excited to like these, and that's really kind of you know been kind of you know perhaps be able to be able to back and explore creating find find the original the original and inject capital into the hand into the hand managers, which you know managers which don't have the same have the same in terms of raising money for their venture capital for their venture capital funds or their investment portfolio. Also want to continue to support nonprofits that are doing yeah. similar work, um, but for now, really excited for now, really excited about going and really looking at how really looking to impact a lot of lives. And so that's really kind of been uh, the core of this year. Uh, also continue to do a number of virtual and a number of virtual and I've been blessed to work for the uh, action the last few months helping with the business development, um, looking at workforce resilience, professional development, training. Um, some diversity and inclusion there as well, for planning, planning, for 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 planning, it's been great to be a part of that network and how that network. Network. we can continue to move all of this work forward all this work and get heading into the new year. Great. Um, could, could you discuss the importance of my minority owned businesses? Uh, DEI focused and community investment funds in strengthening local economies and expanding community capital. Well, my grandmother, uh, grandmother has always said to me uh, that we're in ownership society, society, my late grandmother. My late grandmother. And, you know, as the mother of my mother, my mother, no, no, no wonder my uncle got it. He understood that ownership really was key. My grandmother's older sister, who was a two year old, uh, owned and operated a shoe store in East Baltimore. And old, what they call old town hall, it's now kind of like shut down and kind of abandoned. In the process of being reduced my life because it's a historic location. Um, kind of central um, Baltimore, 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 Baltimore,
um, as a member of a, a delegation of about, I think about six or seven of us, sponsored by the U.S. Embassy. We went uh, in partnership with the University System of South Africa. So in South Africa, there's really no private university. There's no private university schools are public for the most part. There's a few uh, religious institutions that are very small and uh, one of the exceptions. Um, but we were blessed to be able to go to the first ever venture capital conference in Stellenbosch, which is a wealthy suburb of Cape Town. And then we visited a number of incubators, a number of panels, and working settlements with a number of universities in Cape Town, in Durban, in the Indian Ocean, got the Gopal Machine in the Indian Ocean. And then we also spent in Johannesburg, serving the Indian to have a chance to go um, to the time of the Indian Ocean, and see that. There's so much. I went to Nelson Mandela's home, Mandela's home. Wato and, and oh, much history there. History and there. what you see is, you know, at the time, 25, now 30 years now, the parallel, the parallel to uh, our American uh, society, our American society, Jim Crow and segregation, Jim Crow and, segregation are harsh, are and really kind of see really, it kind of really see it. in a lot of ways, you know, a lot of ways, generation to a head of where they are now and trying to figure out, out in the new world, post apartheid, where you have, you know, certainly equal access to government. Government, certainly equal access to nonprofit and religious institutions, but but in but South Africa, land and capital is controlled by white South African white South Africans, and that's really and what the really is really held. And I think in America, it's very different. Very different. But by and large, by and large property, property, as well as capital, as capital, as capital, as capital as still by and large control by white Americans. And so we American. To create uh, mechanisms, uh, mechanisms uh, and opportunity and access, and access uh, for, uh, for for everyone. For everyone. We need to be uh, equity in that sense of equity. Equity. So, um, so really, that really is really 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 very informative to help you and, and get a broader perspective, broader perspective as, as to the challenges, the challenges and the opportunities that is uh, free access and some of the mechanisms access, to look at think about uh, technology transfer in university space. And that's something where I had I was able to be out of the computer science department at university to understand a little bit about technology transfer and the value of being able to have intellectual property to be able to build a business build a business and scale technology, right? So be able to bring that expert to bring that expert and they they really look up to us as Americans, especially our ingenuity. South yeah. Africans are uh, uh, very rich, very diverse culture, it's a very rich, diverse society. So, many of the students I work with were first generation college, right? Out of school, literally still figuring out how to integrate. They had only universities and white only universities. So, now they were figuring out really how to integrate schools and how to integrate the whole system. And there were still gaps in resources and which schools still need more resources financially and otherwise, right? So, so we were supposed to have one meeting actually got the meeting actually the day before there was a, a protest was, uh, set off what they call a petrol bomb and blew up a car. And so it's kind of interesting to be you know, in proximity to young people and students who are really frustrated because um, to, to, to cut student aid. And so um the understanding um, understanding generationally, globally what's happening and what the demands of the younger people of the other generation that's behind me and behind us thinking about and their perspective and their understanding globally they have access to media and technology and social media um that really animates them so i've been able to continue to be a doctor i was able to do some work indirectly through a, a church there that had started an training uh, uh, training uh, uh, south africa to be able to do remote job virtually with the marketing media space and um, and, um, able to hire one of these students, hire one of these students and work for, for some of the things I was doing at the time. And so, um, yeah. able to you know, maintain yeah. some of that. Yeah. And before yeah. COVID, I was, uh, I was, I was uh, applying for a Fulbright. I'm hoping to go back for a back to do some work, work and do some work. That sideline. So, hopefully, in time, I'll be able to go back and return there and continue that work. But that being able to be there really. Broaden my perspective on the opportunities and the challenges. And the challenges. You know, a lot of things we're talking about here in America are not necessarily very unique. Um, and that South Africa is a place that has similar problems and similar opportunities to get access and to strengthen uh, their republic and democracy. And South Africa is you know, really trying to figure out how can they, you know, can they sustain this interracial, diverse, diverse 
that's really 30 years old. 30 years old. America, we're really, America, we're really 50, 60 years post segregation, post trying to figure out the same thing. And you know, people, yeah, most you know, Americans, they say, maybe two, uh, we're, you know, we're 200 year old country, and we're way beyond where South Africa is. In certain ways, yes, but in certain ways, you know. And so there's a lot of work to be done. A lot of work here in South Africa, globally. Again, to create access, to create access, to create better outcomes, and education, housing, healthcare, healthcare, and water. Um, so we can all thrive in where we live and where we work and where we play. And so um, that's the dream. That's the vision. And that's that, that, that continues, like I said earlier, to animate me and the work that I do. So it was again, it was a blessing to be able to blessing to be able to continue to be part of it. Uh, with South Africa, uh, chance to get up at four in the morning one time and doing one time and be uh, on screen at a on screen at a, during COVID during with COVID. South Africans. And so, um, you know, very so, uh, pleased with them over the six hours, yeah, over six, six hours. Hours. time difference, so, depending on what time it is here with our daylight savings. Again, it's been amazing to maintain, amazing to maintain over the last five years. Over the last five years. Great. Steve? Want a question? Um, so, so Russell, as someone who has worked across various sectors, from private equity to community consulting, what have been the most valuable lessons in creating lasting impact and building resilient communities um, that you could talk to us about today? Hmm. Some of the lasting, lasting uh, lessons. Lasting, good question. Lessons, good question. Hmm. I mean, I think the biggest lesson I think the biggest that lesson, I always take away is uh, it takes collaboration. Um, and I know I'm maybe repeating um, myself a little bit, but um, it really um, takes the ability to, to understand. To understand. And, and I stress that so much because I know so people who come in and I've seen it. Um, people who come in with capital, in with capital or idea or a vision or solution or vision or community that they have not been a part of. Um, and, and, and have a vision and idea that might be uh, in unison with what the community is trying to accomplish. I have a, another a friend of mine who's launched a nonprofit, which takes a different model, really kind of come to support facilitating communities doing self discovery and create unity around what, what are their needs, what is their, what's their vision for the community they reside in. And so we're coming in with a solution based approach, coming in with a discovery based approach. And so, really, the, that's been really a, the a best kind of just trying to roll out in part more. Really, um, really um, empowering people, empowering people. Um, not just not just not giving just, not people. Giving, so, you know, give a person a fish to eat for a day, teach them how to fish, they can fish for a lifetime. It's really empowering people, really empowering people um, to, to really, with, to with really the tools, with the uh, framework. Uh, you saw some of this work also in South Africa, also also to create the framework the where framework people can find solutions. Um, again, people who are closer yeah. to the problem or the opportunity are going to yeah. 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 how to yeah. solve yeah. that opportunity. Yeah. So yeah. really yeah. enabling yeah. 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 Um, about where they are yeah. and yeah. 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 into what they want their what community, they want. Yeah. What, they, what resources would be valuable yeah. for them, yeah. and then empowering people. Yeah. 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 I think it takes that kind of yeah. leadership, that yeah. kind of yeah. approach. Yeah. Um, again, that's yeah. that centers yeah. the people yeah. to serve, that center and what you're doing how to serve Urban. And that's been the biggest been lesson the biggest that I lesson how to that encourage people to get that time, time and a lot of it can take a lot of sacrifice as well. Of sacrifice. Um, but if it's done well and done at scale, it will do well. That's been the exciting thing about being able to do in Hagerstown. Is you know we came in you know one part of the academy and we said hey we have certified you know curriculum and words. And coding, and coding, and want to work with you. Know, what do you need? And so we really had to have. We had to have. I've been blessed to drive out the Blue Mountain a couple of times myself this summer. And summer sit with the head of economic summer. development, the head of hospitality and tourism, a couple of times. Go to the um, baseball stadium and really just listen and understand. Of course, the educational program and program stuff. Of course, who doesn't want? It? But we you know we can't just come in and catch up down the road either. So how does this fit? How does this fit what you're already doing? Where is, where, is where, is where, is okay, where is there opportunity? Where is there opportunity to start? Opportunity to start? And, and so it's taking time. It's taking a lot of meetings. Uh, a lot of meetings. Colleagues have driven out to the time more out. times than I have to have these meetings to really listen to the on Zoom calls like this with various leaders in the school system and economic development and city government to really understand how we can uh, meet the needs in Hagerstown. 
Anderson. Unique plays. Washington County has Washington County has um, you know, off highway seven, off highway one, eighty 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 one, in America, right? So, America, got, right? so we got a commerce there, a lot of people, in there, a lot of people move. Um, but also because of uh, the because prison of, system and people getting out or coming out here, um, here, sometimes we've been having the crime and the, economy's and the economy is growing. The area is growing in terms of housing. And housing, and housing. And so this is a unique um, challenge, but also, but also and like every community in America, like that's, community that's, America that's shifting and I think it's that at least 40 percent of the kids move or live somewhere else from where they were born. And so as we have a more transit society, as our society grows, our needs are huge housing deficit here in America. Um, it really takes some intention to get to the point where we can really start to see some real change. It really takes some intention to get some listening to understand as I understand from Hagerstown and my partners of our academy and our management. We had to come in and build relationships and build credibility. And now we're at a point where then this is again. Signed a letter, a letter, the project, project, um, we're working um, on to, to move on a couple of spaces there, spaces to do work there. And, 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 and put like a charter, a charter, a charter, charter um, school in as well. And so, well, so and that's the kind of work that is required. Kind of um, even when you have solutions and ideas, you maybe even add resources to come in and build support. And so, again, at the risk of repeating myself, I think it's so important to be to build, be to pour, to be to listen first, listen first, first, and then go from there. Then go from there. Hey, great. Um, so as we come to the end of this, um, there's one question I want to ask you. It's going to be a really open-ended question, um, and and I came across this in my research um, about you, and that's I, I would love for you to give us your perspective on the racial wealth gap and some things that we could do to actually close that racial wealth gap. And that's a pretty open question for you. Man. Well, I guess that you know, previously, you know, access to capital is really, I think, the, the fight for the first century. Um, and, you know, obviously, it's been, you know, I have a video on equity and general equity and or you can visit there and see our long video for 2023, where we a Netflix documentary that talks very much about the work that I was going to do. You're on mute? Oh man, I'm halfway down oh, to my end. I'm talking about the respiratory thing. It's not muted. It's not talking in everybody's ear. My apologies. Ear, my apologies. I was just saying, um, you know, check, out, check out um, the org and launch video there. Uh, site and has some clips from a Netflix documentary that talks about the historical roots of the wealth gap and thinking about how Americans were enslaved, when women certainly couldn't own property or vote, and how we're still building that. Um, very unfair, um, very unfair, and, unfair and, and trying to make up ground, make up ground, and, and really, um, obviously, I think to reach the close the wealth gap would take a, a, a national, a national government solution. Government solution. I think in the absence of that, there's still very strategic things that we can do in Europe and other countries. That might be the mechanism. But historically and traditionally, in America, um, and certainly the private sector is a lot of things. Yeah, a lot that that, 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 that in Europe in particular, they were really shocked they were, to think about you know, uh, healthcare. Uh, healthcare being the one people think about one talking about the most. Talk the most. Um, so really thinking about again, how do we how do we, how do we, how do we, right? How do we uh, leverage uh, people that's available that's on the available to form strategic, strategic form. Um, to create um, to better, better healthy communities and better society, create some of the bridges, some of the bridges to empower more and more people of color, people color to operate well, businesses to create jobs. And so, so it's really about access. And for so long, long people in our country, most people, country, country, most people uh, did not have uh, access. Not have access. It's really just been the last it's been the last year that we've been to legally have access. But of course, some of the of um, of uh, 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 racism, so are pervasive in our So I refuse to believe there are some there are some game. Um, I, I, you know, I, I take, I, I, I take a, a page out of the book out of the book. Uh, um, we don't need the bakery. Um, the bakery. Um, um, Adam, Adam, Adam and people place in the garden. Where there were apple. Apple. Apple has seeds. So has the, seeds, uh, the assumption actually could actually more, right? You eat the apple right. seeds from the ground and then build how many apple trees. Tree, you know, and maybe if you have six seeds and six apple trees, but then how many apples from those trees? No. 
So it really is an exponential, well, really is an exponential from, that from that way in terms of that way in terms of plant more seeds, plant more seeds. right? We can spur right. we can we can and create more apples and everyone can really prosper in the universe. So um, um, it's a beautiful analogy when you think about it. Think think about again, it. as opposed yeah. to having over yeah. 230 yeah. billion dollars of capital, yeah. dollars of capital yeah. that's yeah. Really on the sidelines, I'm sure it's yeah. 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 different pods and different foundations. Yeah. Foundation. Listen, the donors buy the donor uh, base. There's at the least that much that's sitting on the sidelines waiting to be directed. So as we could direct that capital to, capital to different fund managers, fund managers, owners, that owners, that owners and provide the support that they need, more capital they need, capital they grow, to hire, to hire, to invest in others, to be able to have the power to grant for other community leaders that are doing work locally, problems closer to opportunities, opportunities. How much stronger could our country, stronger, our country, our country, our world be? So, so um, that's really why I encourage people to think and, and be aware of. And as uh, we approach Giving Day here in the November, 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 and the view giving time to think very, to think very uh, about uh, your uh, topic, about 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 supporting, supporting, you know, um, welcome very uh, 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 donated equity and diamond, uh, diamond, uh, diamond, 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 diamond but it's really wonderful organizations that are doing this work. I encourage you to be everybody that's listening, watching this, to be strategic and thinking about who they want to support. They want to support in the future and support continuously. Well, Russell, thank you so much. Uh, we really enjoyed having you on today. How can people learn more about the wonderful work that you're doing and connect with you? Again, equityendowment.org. You can sign up there. You could do a newsletter, probably send something out to the email email where email we are, have some interesting are, things going, and, and you know, and, you know and, what I'm looking at, and, and personally, and also, and and also what the work is doing with our dental workforce and our partnership with all the management of Bald Academy out in Hagerstown. And so, I'm really excited there. And of I'm very easy to find at Ralph if you get across all the video on LinkedIn and on in particular. And happy to, happy to. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks for having me.